so far, whenever we access resources that are available through the services in our controllers, we were dealing with the asynchronous nature of the access by including the then to resolve the promise inside our controllers. Now, this was creating some messy code there. Now, can we somehow do a better approach for simplifying the code in our um, controller and take care of the data resolution elsewhere? So that is where the UI router and the resolve object in the UI router comes to our rescue. Let's talk about that next, and we will see how we can make use of it to simplify our controller code. So again, coming back to the point, the Angular controller that we have been implementing so far has been dealing with the asynchronous calls that were being issued from the controller. Uh, we were using the then for each of those resource accesses and then implementing the functions to deal with the success and failure of access to those resources. Now, when you think about it, the controller's primary purpose should be to bridge between the service and the view and make the data available to your view so that the view can render appropriately. Can we find a way of shifting this asynchrony out of our controller into another location whereby our controller code can be simplified? This is what we're going to approach next. To deal with it, we'll take the help of the resolve object that is available on each state in the UI router. Now, this resolve object is a map of dependencies that should be resolved and injected into the controller. We'll see how this is done with an example in a short while. This approach can also be used on the routes in the Angular's ng-route module if you so choose to. But in this case, I am illustrating using the ang Angular UI router on how to make use of the resolve. The resolve object is nothing but a, a set of key value pairs. The key here is the name of the resolve dependency that you can inject into the controller. The value itself will be typically defined as a function that returns the value of the dependency that you are defining there. So. When you move from one state to the other state, before you enter the new state, the resolution has to be done before moving to the new state. So when you reach, when the controller gets instantiated for the new state, the data is already available for you for the controller to directly make use of the data. So this way, we relieve the controller from having to deal with the asynchronous nature of calls to access the resource. Let's look at one example of how you can make use of the Angular UI Router's resolve object to simplify our controller code. Here, I give you a snippet of code corresponding to the app favorites state. In the app favorite state, along with the URLs and the views, for each view, we can also associate a resolve object with it. And as you can see from the um, code there. The resolve object consists of key value pairs. Here we have two keys, the dishes and the favorites. The dishes itself gets resolved by calling the menu factories query method. So which means that the dishes will be resolved to the dishes value that is obtained by querying the menu factory. And similarly, the favorites is also resolved by calling the get favorites method of the favorite factory. So that way, when the resolution is complete, the dishes here, the key, will be pointing to the object that is the JavaScript array consisting of all the uh, dishes. Similarly, the favorites points to the JavaScript array containing all the favorites. These two now can be injected into your controller and directly made use of within your controller. Now, when we look at the controller code by using this, uh, using the resolve, you will notice that the controller code is a lot more simpler. So let's look at how our controller gets simplified. Taking a look at our controller, 
Now in the controller, we are going to inject both the dishes and the favorites directly into the controller. And wherever you need the favorites, you will simply say scope favorites equal to favorites. And similarly, scope dishes equal to dishes. We no longer need to implement the then part and so on, where we were um, trying to resolve the asynchronous nature of access to the resources previously. The code is significantly simplified. Now, the controller directly receives the resolved dishes object and the resolved favorites object. And so the code will be a lot more straightforward to implement. We're going to move to the next exercise where we will use this approach to redesign our um, confusion app that we have been working on so far. We will do it in the context of the Ionic app that we have implemented, but this approach can easily be used in an, an Angular application if you so desire. Also remember that this approach can also be used with ngroute. ngroute also supports the resolve object.